Amoxicillin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic. This medication can be used in various conditions that are having bacterial infections. Due to its effectiveness, safety, and oral bioavailability, amoxicillin is a widely used broad-spectrum antibiotic. Penicillins can be classified into different categories like natural penicillins, broad-spectrum penicillins, extended-spectrum penicillins, and anti-staphylococcal penicillins. Among them, amoxicillin is classified as a broad-spectrum antibiotic. Within this category, another medication is ampicillin. Interestingly, amoxicillin is a derivative of ampicillin. It is classified as a broad spectrum because this medication is effective against both gram-positive and a few of the gram-negative bacteria. It mainly acts by inhibiting the bacterial cell wall synthesis. Therefore, it is useful in the bacterial infections that are having the cell wall. Few of the bacteria, like mycoplasma and chlamydia, do not have a cell wall. So in such infections, amoxicillin is ineffective. However, amoxicillin has many advantages. It has high bioavailability. It has a broader spectrum of activity than the natural penicillins. Even it has good stability towards gastric acid. Amoxicillin is more effective against gram-negative infections like influenza. This video covers important facts about amoxicillin, like how it works, how resistance is developed towards this medication, what the clinical uses are. Clinical uses. Amoxicillin can be used in treating respiratory tract infections caused by bacteria. It can be used for treating sinusitis caused by bacterial infections that induce nasal congestion, facial pain, or pressure in the face. However, sinusitis can also be produced by viral infection, where amoxicillin is ineffective. Amoxicillin is also useful in treating bronchitis and pneumonia caused by bacteria. In treating middle ear infections, again, amoxicillin can be used. It is also useful in relieving strep throat, which affects your throat and tonsils, producing a sore throat, pain, and difficulty swallowing. For tooth abscesses and for dental infections, again, this medication can be used. In Helicobacter pylori eradication, amoxicillin can be combined with other antibiotics like clarithromycin and proton pump inhibitors. For treating skin and soft tissue infections, again, amoxicillin can be used. How amoxicillin works? Normally, the bacteria can synthesize its rigid cell wall that is made up of peptidoglycan layers. This step is very important for the bacteria to maintain its shape and prevent lysis. This peptidoglycan forms a mesh-like polymer that is composed of repeating basic sugar units. Particularly, N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid are the sugar units that are repeatedly arranged to form a lengthy sugar chain. Each chain is going to be cross-linked with another layer of the chain by short lengths of peptides. Here five amino acids are involved, so it's called a pentapeptide. This pentapeptide is actually extended from the sugar in acetylmeramic acid. These chains are cross-linked to form a mesh-like structure that produces the rigidity of the cell wall. The cross-linking is the important step, which is mediated by a protein called penicillin binding protein. Since this protein is blocked by penicillins, it is called penicillin binding protein. This protein has a role in the final cross-linking step in peptidoglycan synthesis. It acts like transpeptidases that produce a cross-link between the two peptide chains. Here a covalent bond is formed between the amino acids on the two adjacent sugar chains. This cross-linking gives strength and rigidity to the bacterial cell wall. Now amoxicillin can target this final step of cell wall synthesis. Amoxicillin contains a ring called beta-lactam. It is a four-member cyclic ring which is just resembling the dipeptide of dialanine present at the end of the pictoglycan precursor. Therefore, because of structural similarity, amoxicillin can strongly bind to this penicillin binding protein. It forms a stable complex. However, this complex is inactive. That means it inhibits the activity of PBP. Therefore, it irreversibly inhibits the transpeptidase activity. This results in the inhibition of transpeptidation and crosslinking is not formed leading to weak and incomplete cell wall formation. This increases the internal pressure, resulting in osmotic fragility and cell lysis. Without cell walls, bacteria cannot exist, leading to bacterial cell death. In this way, amoxicillin can produce bacterial cell killing by inhibiting cell wall synthesis. Bacterial resistance. A few bacteria may develop the resistance towards the amoxicillin. This may be developed due to improper or repeated use of this medication. Few of the bacteria can produce an enzyme called beta-lactamase. This enzyme is responsible for cleaving off the beta-lactam ring in the amoxicillin. 
Without this ring, it cannot bind to the penicillin binding protein. Therefore, it becomes inactive. In such conditions, amoxicillin can be combined with beta-lactamase inhibitors like clavulanic acid. The second mechanism of resistance is due to alteration of PBP. Since amoxicillin binds to the penicillin binding protein, any mutations in this enzyme can alter the site of binding, therefore reducing the affinity towards the same site. Due to the loss of affinity, amoxicillin cannot bind to this enzyme. It cannot inhibit its activity. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus is an example of such a type of bacterial resistance. A few of the bacteria can also develop resistance by simply effluxing the drug out of the bacterial membrane. These pumps are called efflux pumps, which are going to pump amoxicillin out of this bacterial cell. A few of the gram-negative bacteria can also develop mutations in the porins, which also eliminate the drug through the pores on the membrane. Due to the decreased intracellular concentration of this amoxicillin in the bacteria, it is rendered ineffective in preventing the bacterial infection. Amoxicillin is highly effective in bacteria that are actively dividing because it is going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis that is required for replication of the bacteria. Now, let's see the precautions of this medication. Just like many of the penicillins, amoxicillin can induce allergic reactions. However, these allergic reactions are mild compared with other types of penicillins. Amoxicillin should be avoided in people with any previous history of allergic reactions with the use of cephalosporins or carbapenems. Cephalosporins are another category of antibiotics that just act like penicillins. Penicillins can show cross-hypersensitivity with cephalosporins. That means they can induce allergy in people who are allergic to cephalosporins. So in the people who develop allergic reactions with the use of cephalosporins, amoxicillin should be avoided. In people with any renal impairment, the amoxicillin dose should be properly adjusted. This medication is going to be metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. Any disturbance in the renal function can produce accumulation of this medication in the body. Therefore, in renal impairment, the dose should be adjusted. In treating the mononucleosis infections caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, amoxicillin can produce a non-allergic rash. This rash is erythematous and red in color. Therefore, in such people, this medication should be avoided. Even though symptoms improve, the amoxicillin course should be completed. It should not be stopped during the course to avoid the development of resistance or reinfection in the future. Amoxicillin is an antibiotic and can inhibit the gut flora, a protective bacteria in the gut wall. This may develop an opportunistic infection by Clostridium difficile. This organism can produce diarrhea, which is commonly known as CDAD, Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. It can be observed after two months of treatment with amoxicillin. In case of the development of diarrhea, fluid and electrolytes should be properly managed. Protein supplementation should be taken to restore the condition. In case of severe diarrhea, an antibiotic like vancomycin may be used for the treatment of Clostridium difficile infection. You should not use the amoxicillin in the absence of any suspected bacterial infection. A superinfection with bacterial or fungal pathogens may be possible during the therapy. In such conditions, this medication should be avoided. What are the side effects of this medication, amoxicillin? The side effects of amoxicillin are mild and well-tolerated. However, they may be severe in a few people based on the risk factors or any dysfunction in the renal system. Amoxicillin commonly produce nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and mild rashes. In a few people, it can also produce angioedema, leading to swelling of the lips, tongue, and pharynx. It also produces hives on skin. Even though rare, it can produce anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening reaction toward the penicillins. In case of any allergic reactions, epinephrine may be given to control these effects. Seizures may be observed at higher doses of amoxicillin or in people with renal failure who are using this amoxicillin without dosage adjustment. Even though rare, it may produce a condition called Stevens-Johnson syndrome that affects skin and soft tissues. Rarely, it can produce interstitial nephritis. How is it given? This medication is available in different dosage forms for ease of administration. It is available as capsules, tablets, and oral suspension. It is also available as chewable tablets. As capsules or tablets, it is available in different strengths such as 250 mg, 500 mg, and 875 mg. It is also available as an IV solution for use in hospitals. However, due to the risk of bacterial resistance, amoxicillin is combined with clavulanic acid in hospitals to treat resistant bacteria. The dose of this amoxicillin depends on the type of infection 
and for which purpose it is going to be used. Generally, for mild to moderate infections, it can be started at a dose of 500 mg every 12 hours. That means it can be taken two times a day. This same amount of medication can also be taken at a lower dose at more frequencies. It can be taken at 250 mg thrice daily. For ENT and skin infections, it can be used for up to 10 to 14 days. In case of severe infections, amoxicillin can be given at 875 mg twice daily. Alternatively, it can also be taken as 500 mg every 8 hours, up to 10 to 14 days. Amoxicillin can be taken with or without food. However, taking it with food can reduce the gastrointestinal side effects. That's all about the key facts of amoxicillin. Please subscribe and hit the like button to support our work. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.